One of the most effective and easy ways to build complex and really unique layouts inside of the browser is to use something called CSS Grid, and that's something that has been basically off limits to us as designers inside of our native tools. Ha ha ha, not anymore, because PenPot has just released CSS Grid-based layouts inside of PenPot 2.0. We're gonna take a look at it right now. <laughs> All right, I have PenPot open and it's always important to keep in mind that PenPot is an open source. That means always will be free, always has been free, super dope, amazing design tool. Here I am inside of the tool and I drew an artboard out of my screen by, you know, selecting board or hitting B and drawing that artboard out. And now that I have that artboard selected, I can scoot over here to the right hand panel and see that I have the option turning on a layout. Now we've had flex layout for a while, but now we have the option of turning on that grid layout. And you'll notice as soon as I turn it on, boom, I get those grid lines directly on my board. I have columns, I have rows, and now we can get in there and edit that specific grid based layout. Now, why is this important? Because, you know, working inside of a grid is super structured. It's very, very effective for creating structured layouts, but also complex layouts where you can really customize them and get really detailed with them. And developers stink and love CSS Grid for a good reason, because it's absolutely awesome. You'll notice if I just draw out a rectangle and I start to try to move it into my layout, it's gonna immediately try to drop it into those grid lines, right? Into those grid boxes, those columns and those rows. And you'll notice also that my grid is currently if I was to grab my actual like boxes here, copy and paste, it's gonna slap it into the right hand side, copy and paste again. It just starts filling in all of those grid boxes, which is great. But all of the content is currently slammed up to the top left and that's where all of this super duper awesome control for my grid comes in. So I'm selecting now my actual artboard that has the grid layout applied and you'll notice I get a bunch of different options here. As I was pasting all of those elements, they were pasting from left to right. I could have made it so when I enter new objects, they paste from top to bottom and go vertical, like through the columns, right? We also have everything kind of slamming up to the top left-hand corner. I can change the positioning for all the elements inside the grid by aligning items not to start, but instead to the center. And then also I'm gonna align items here not to the left, but to the center there. Now, every time I move an object in and out of the grid, it's gonna immediately try to snap into that position. We have the parent and the child. The parent, that's the grid, has some things we can dictate. And then it's also going to dictate all the children inside. That's what we just did by telling all the kids where they need to sit down at this grid-like table, all right? Selecting this again, we have a bunch of other options right now, and these options are gonna be how we justify content inside. I'm not gonna get into that, although it's really, really cool. We're able to justify items you know, by placing them, like, like splitting them up, pushing them to the far ends, pulling them together, you know, justifying things to the left and the right. Right now, we just have the item set to stretch and our contents are not really stretching like all the stuff inside because we need to come down to those and the actual grid elements. We can actually absolutely position them or we can say we want you to change the width of this so that it always fills. So now we've told the child element inside how we want it to stretch and position. And as we start to move these things around, for instance, getting rid of this one, I could drag another one inside and it's going to try to fill the space just like that. So that's some pretty cool basic positioning and control for our grid and for our layout. But now let's do a few more complex things. All right, I have my grid built and you'll notice that I have three items right now that are kind of expanding. The children inside are set to expand and fill the space. And one of them is not because I want to get in there and start editing my grid. There's a couple of different ways you can get into edit mode of your grid layout. One of those is heading over to the right hand side when you have your actual grid selected and you'll see the edit grid function there. We can tap that. And when we do that, we go into edit mode where we have these column and row kind of controls around our grid. And by hitting the green done button, we can close that up and we're all done. Or if we have some available space inside of here, we can also double click on the grid itself. We'll get that same ability to start editing our grid. And that's important because sometimes we have our grid available. We can actually click on the container itself 
and other times, like we've already done, things are gonna to be totally covering our grid. So we're wanting to select the board itself, open up the grid controls, and boom, we're in edit mode just like that. Now, what can we do when we're inside of edit mode? We can do some really, really cool stuff. We can build onto our grid. We can change the padding and spacing. Right now, we're kind of filling up the space. I would like some even padding and spacing. So let's do that first. I'm gonna simply come over to the right-hand panel with my grid selected. I'm gonna start adding some gaps inside of my grid. Let's do 30. And just to balance it out, why don't we come here to the padding portion and we'll put 30 pixels of padding around the outside of our grid. Let's click done. And now we have a nice, perfectly spaced grid. And as I start to move this thing around, remember those objects inside are set to fill our grid and they're doing just that, but we got that perfect spacing, which is really nice. Let's go back in, double click on the grid and start editing a little bit more. You'll notice at the top here over each of the columns or the rows, we're getting some units of measurement. And this one FR stands for one fractional unit. That means our grid is automatically breaking things up into fractions and fractions are super smart and super duper helpful because we can say, Hey, as long as this thing is, we want one of them to be this fraction, this column, and the other to be this fraction. It's almost like saying 50% and 50%. The reason we don't just say 50% and 50% is because what if I want to add another column, I can click plus over here and it's just doing that fractional mathematics for me without me having to go back in and recalculate. Plus 33.3333333% is really confusing and hard to do. This makes it really easy. So let's finish messing with our grid and we can actually grab our item, copy and paste, and we can just do the same thing, copy and paste and fill in those spaces, double click on the grid, we're right back into edit mode. Now, we are currently using a fractional unit of measurement, but we can set hard-coded pixel values here. So maybe I want, it's a left-hand sidebar for a website and I want it to be 500 pixels. I can type that in. And now we have a hard-coded number here. It's always gonna stay 500 pixels and everything else is going to stretch around it, which is really, really cool. Now we're starting to dictate layout and we can do some very cool stuff with that. I can also click in here and I get a lot of options if I hit the meatball menu on the right-hand side of any column or row. I can duplicate a column. I can add columns to the left or right, delete them, and I can delete the column and any elements inside, which is very, very helpful, okay? Now, once I'm here, I have to understand that when I open up this grid editing atmosphere, not only do I get those abilities here to add new columns and rows, but I can also open them up in the right-hand panel and I can see that this has three columns. Each of them are currently set to one fractional unit. So I get that nice shorthand view of the columns and the rows. And if we wanted to add another row here, we could totally do that. I also love that as I kind of hover here on the right-hand side, you'll notice over on the left, as I hover over these, it's telling me what content is locked inside and it's highlighting that row or that column, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna add one more row here just for fun, and it's going to evenly split and do all the math for me, and that's perfect. Now we have a three by three layout that looks really, really good. I'm gonna press escape on my keyboard. That'll get me out of grid edit mode, and I wanna just copy and paste a couple more elements inside. It's gonna fill in the space, and now I've done that work. Now, the last thing I want to show here before we move on to building our Bento grid using CSS grid here in PenPot is I want to open this up. And it's really, really important that you notice that the numbers that are marking our grid structure here. So we start at one and this box here is moving from one to two. And there are some ways that we're going to talk about here where we can move these boxes or sort of control these boxes and have them sort of expand, not just from one to two, but we can start creating grid areas and really customize these. And you'll notice as I scroll in, as I hover over the normal arrow, this thin arrow here will allow me to change the spacing or the distance of this grid, right? And it was kind of zooming out. Now we're hard coding these two columns of ours. Or if I zoom in, you can see I have this kind of special arrow that's actually going to change the grid area. I can grab that one and start to move it over. I can do the same thing and maybe find that same arrow going up and down here. And I can start to build some really cool layouts that are customized. All right, now that we understand the basics of grid, let's build a really cool and customizable 
bento layout. I have my bento cards already built and I've kind of already laid them in a fashion in which I want them to be inside of my grid. And now it's time to kind of assess and figure out how we're gonna build this grid to support our layout. And I think one of the best things you can do is try to break it up into the tiniest or most split up grid that will facilitate your layout. When I look at this, I see not one, two rows and not one, two, three columns. I see something much more complex than that because I'm gonna take the smallest unit or element I have. I can fit one, two, three, four, five of those. So I see five rows and in, I know that this element is going to kind of like break across into this area. So instead of seeing one, two, three columns, I would actually break each of these into two. That way I see one, two, three, four, five, six columns. That means six columns, five rows. Let's build that grid and start assembling everything together. I'm going to come down to my board that's kind of sized already how I want it. Grab the actual board, come over and turn on my grid layout, immediately hit edit grid. And I'm just going to start adding those columns and rows. We said we're going to do six columns. So let me just add those. All of them are using fractional units, which is helpful. We're also going to do five rows. Let's back up. And that is a really busy layout, but don't worry. We're going to give it a little bit of spacing just like this. Let's do 30 pixels gap going each direction. And then we'll do 30 pixels of padding around the outside. Now it's a little bit cozier, a little bit more spacious. I'm going to click on an individual little block of my grid. And you'll notice when I click on that block, we're getting some interesting readout here in the top right hand corner. It's telling us that it's in position one. And if I click on this one, it's in position two. Now what I want to do is grab that area, click over to manual and notice this. I, I'm saying it's in position one. We can keep kind of moving around and finding the individual blocks, but we're, it's saying it's in position one and it's moving or it's stretching and stopping at two. What if we stop it at three? Now it's kind of melding those rows and columns together. And this is like working inside of an Excel spreadsheet, kind of combining rows and columns. It's exactly what we're doing here. And with that being said, we can look at our element here and say, okay, I think that what we need to do is probably kind of combine that one together and hit those two rows right there. And then let's lead this thing over to take up that entire space. I think that's gonna fit our layout just nice, just like that. Let's have this one span here. We're gonna to go to manual and we'll have it kind of fill in that spot and click over. Notice how we're kind of just mimicking our layout up above. And now we're gonna want these elements to move to manual. And we're basically gonna take up these six blocks here to create an area for that card, these six and these six. So we can do this using our controls up top. We could also zoom in and find that nice little double arrow and just move that across and do the same thing going down and boom. We are building grids super fast, just like that. Sometimes some people like the other way of doing it, using the numbers up here on the right, and some people would prefer just to drag and drop. I'm kind of a drag and drop guy, depending on the day. There it is. We've kind of built our grid structure there. Pretty nice. So I'm going to grab my first card. I'm just going to drag it inside, and you'll notice it doesn't fit all the way, right? When we click our grid, it's not moving all the way, but we already know how to do that. We're going to grab our card, we're just gonna tell it to stretch and fit and right into that area. So now with that being said, I just get to drag all of these elements inside and give them a home inside of my pre-made grid. Let's do that. And I'm gonna grab all of the boards that are inside of here and just make sure that they're all stretching and filling. And look at that. I've immediately created a responsive bento grid layout because I can grab my board and start to stretch it out and everything is going to ebb and flow appropriately. Now, you may not like how things inside are stretching. We can grab any of the individual contents inside, start doing some interesting constraints and pinning, making sure things are staying where we want them to. But for the most part, we have a really, really cool grid that we've built here that will work in most situations as this responsive bento grid. And again, that's one of those things that's only possible using CSS Grid because it's such a powerful layout tool. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and tools like Penpot. So ring that bell so you know when another video like this one comes out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for some helpful links to Penpot. 
get you started, get you up and running and understanding it, as well as a link to grab this pen pop file if you'd like to build this bento grid. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things. And if you're looking for some more content, check these videos out right here.